Very good. So this is a short explain everything video lecture on um, the Hittite, Assyrian, and Persian empires as we read about them in our textbook chapter 1, sections 5 and 6. So let's start with um, an ancient people called the Hittites, uh, who uh, were a uh, uh, descended from Indo-European peoples. By that we mean, um, again, we had talked about migration of peoples, and uh, so uh, one group that had settled in uh, what would be today um, uh, Asia Minor were referred to as Indo-European. And so in this migration of people, the Hittites descended from Indo-European peoples and set up their empire in what is today modern Turkey around 1750 BC. Um, now, uh, in addition to using iron in their tool and weapon making, uh, Hittite warfare technology shaped other ancient empires' military as well. So, for instance, one uh, achievement of Hittites in military uh, technology was shield design. So Hittite shields um, were some of the best, um, owing to uh, the design was something that, as you see in the illustration, the Hittite shields um, provided protection but were also light enough to uh, be uh, wielded easily by uh, a Hittite soldier. Uh, as well, their swords. Um, Hittite swords were uh, made of iron and designed to be um, uh, shorter so that they could be used in uh, close combat. Um, next, we'll look at uh, the rise of the Phoenicians. And so we read about this in chapter 1, section 5b. So the Phoenician peoples uh, established their civilization along the eastern coast of the Mediterranean um, in uh, the area that is today is modern Israel, but the, but the Phoenicians settled north of modern-day Israel. Um, so in the ancient world, uh, the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, this is where you would find the, the uh, Phoenician uh, Empire. Um, uh, now, the Phoenician Empire was small in terms of uh, you know, physical um, uh, geography, but their influence was tremendous because the Phoenicians made their wealth uh, from making and trading luxury goods, and especially they controlled trade in one particular aspect of making dyed purple cloth. And to do this, they used a, uh, a marine mollusk uh, called a Murex turnispina, and I have a photograph of one down there. And uh, so the immense amount of mollusks needed to make even a small amount of this cloth resulted in the high cost of the fabric, right? So the Phoenicians also gave the world one of the earliest alphabets. And if you look, uh, you can see that the Phoenician alphabet um, looks much easier, doesn't it, than, say, hieroglyphics. And so among the Phoenicians, you had writing used by more people as a way of uh, recording trade deals and, and how much cloth is made and so forth. Writing serves a purpose of recording business, right? Next, we'll look at the Assyrian Empire. And so um, uh, if you think about it, yeah, you'll notice that each empire assimilates the previous empire. And so it's like building on and building on. So the Hittite Empire was taken and made part of the Assyrian Empire, and then the Assyrian Empire would become part of the Persian Empire, and, and the Persian Empire becomes part of the Greek Empire, and so forth. Okay? Um, Assyria was one of the ancient organizations in Mesopotamia that organized itself around an agricultural economy. And a powerful monarch ruled politically as well as religiously. So, for instance, um, uh, in Assyrian art, uh, the greatest of the Assyrian kings, uh, Ashurbanipal, uh, is shown defeating a lion. And um, the reason for that is a lion is a symbol of the power of nature, right? The great untamed lion, the powerful lion. And so, uh, Ashurbanipal shows that as a king, not only did Ashurbanipal rule over people, but he uh, was almost like a, um, endowed with these godlike powers, 
and as a ruler he was also expected to keep order even over nature so to speak so the power of the kings of Assyria was not just political it was almost like a like a spiritual power um, next following the Assyrian Empire we have the Persian Empire and we read about this in section 6b of chapter 1 and so the Persian Empire of the ancient world comprised much of what is today Iran and so the empire's greatest extent was under uh, probably the greatest Persian ruler Cyrus the Great okay and at the time it was the largest empire the world had seen so if you look at the map here you'll see that the Persian Empire uh, takes uh, the um, uh, Assyrian and Babylonian empires and so forth and uh, eventually even into um, uh, Egypt and so uh, the, 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 it's what I mean is that each empire seemed to build on, on a previous um, and so finally we have uh, the uh, uh, whole idea of like the Persian Empire how do you govern such a vast empire and so we look at Cyrus the Great and he solved that problem by creating a vast bureaucracy uh, or system of imperial officials to administer things such as collecting taxes and judging cases and maintaining general order. And so the Persian Empire uh, also was the first to employ a very efficient road system, roads that were maintained by the Persian um, bureaucracy, okay, um, and these roads serve the purpose of in, uh, speeding up uh, transportation, trade, but more importantly, communication. Um, in order to rule an empire of that size, you need uh, efficient communication routes among the empire, among the different administrative posts. So, so with that, uh, a little bit of notes on uh, Hittites, Assyria, and Persia in preparation for our uh, next class.